Alrighty y'all, happy Tuesday, or as I like to call it, the second Monday of the week. So last week I posted a question on Instagram as far as what you guys would like to see in the next Tip Tuesday. And I got a lot of you reaching out about what active recovery is, when to do it, what it looks like, how to do it. So we're gonna cover all things active recovery today. In my opinion, active recovery is defined as an activity that is recoverable. It kind of sounds nonsensical or you know super intuitive, but when you're doing something, whatever it is, it should be done at a conversational pace in order for it to be categorized as active recovery. As soon as you can't sing the song you're listening to or recite the show you're watching or keep up with your training partner or whatever, as far as conversation goes, it's too intense and now you're no longer um, in an active recovery state. Okay? So when should you take an active recovery day? I think we all have a pretty good idea of what a rest day is and when we should take a rest day. So a rest day is almost like a replacement for um, a recovery day or vice versa. So instead of taking the day entirely off, you're going to do something much lighter than what you normally do in order to work out that soreness, um, mitigate any fatigue that you've built up because when we have successive uh, workouts in a row, that starts to build up those things and we need to clear that out of our system by either uh, taking a day off or by going through some active recovery. So what does active recovery look like? Active recovery is best done when you are not under tension for prolonged periods. So when I say tension, I mean bearing a load or uh, moving through a range of motion very slow. So no tempo, um, most times barbells and CrossFit type or HIIT workouts don't lend themselves well to active recovery. So most times I would suggest a cyclical motion or what we call monostructural cardio. So think classic cardio, rowing, elliptical, treadmill, stair stepper, bike, anything like that where you're doing that same motion over and over again, that's where that cyclical term comes from. So one of my favorite go-tos is choose one of those machines, 10 to 20 minutes I'm gonna be on there, and every one to two minutes I'm gonna jump off and do a movement, a body weight movement for the most part. So push up, sit up, squat, lunge, most of the time I focus on the areas where I'm sore. So let's say I had a very squat heavy week. Uh, I would try and cycle through a couple of squats every minute or two minutes to make sure that I'm getting some blood flow in, in that uh, area. But also I'm not overdoing it when I get back onto my cardio equipment. So when should you take an active recovery day? After two or three days of exercise in a row, for my newer folks, you might want to consider taking an active recovery day every other day. So that way the intensity isn't so high for a long time because that can actually do more damage than it does good. So that's when we should take active recovery. What active recovery is, is a low intensity activity that we can maintain conversational pace through. One of those things um, that what you might find helpful for prolonged success is to just get on a piece of cardio machine and go slow. Hop off every couple minutes, do something, that's it. Don't overcomplicate it. Go on a walk, go outside, go on a hike. Just make sure it's low and slow, my friends. That's what I gotta tell you about active recovery. So I hope you guys found that useful and I'll see you on the next one.